Hey everyone, Doug here with B&H. Today we've got something special for the creators who are looking to step up their game a little bit. This is the Sony a7C, a completely new variant in the a7 series. As you can see, it looks quite different from the rest of the a7 family, but here's the one thing you need to know right away. It's got a full frame sensor in an APS-C sized body. It could just be the perfect camera for those looking for a serious upgrade in image quality or those who want to dive into full frame for the first time. Now, where or where will we take this new A7C? To the Appalachian Trail, of course, where, you know, it's a compact camera, the A7C, the C has to mean compact, right? Listen to this. You get a 24.2 megapixel backside illuminated sensor powered by the Bions X processor. Continuous shooting goes up to 10 FPS with full autofocus and auto exposure. Dynamic range is up to 15 stops. There's 4K video on board and there is even real time IAF and tracking. But considering how much of a departure the camera is, it is worth seeing how it fares as a compact camera. So we got most of the same features that we've seen in the A7 family till now uh, in a much smaller body. And I really just wanna see how it fares in the great outdoors. Let's go. This is still too human. Let's move. You can really see that autofocus just working. So I've had my hands on the a7C now for a few minutes, taken a couple of shots with it here and there, and I can tell you that there's a lot that's already very familiar about the camera, not just the body itself, but just the way it feels as you're taking the shots. The still images out of the a7C are, as expected, fantastic. The dynamic range and colors from Sony's full frame 24.2 megapixel BSI sensor are exceptional. Colors are well-defined and separated, with stunning contrast and saturation all around. And what bird that is. Could you hold this? You must do anything and everything to get the shot. Details and textures are stunningly defined. You can see in this shot, for example, the textures and the fibers of the bubble net, and even the soap suds forming around it. Shooters coming off of an APS-C body will immediately feel the difference here. And the kind of shots you can take, and how far you can push the exposures. Low light performance, while not in the same league as the a7R or especially the a7S, is respectable and I would absolutely use a photo up to about ISO 12800. I'm almost always a manual shooter, but sometimes I'll switch to shutter or aperture priority and leave my ISO in full auto because sometimes even I want to shoot casually. And honestly, I never had to worry about noise here. Oh boy. Well, before we ascend these glorious stairs, let's talk about the lens, right? So this is the new FE 28 to 60 millimeter F4 to 5.6 lens. Obviously this covers a full frame image, it has to for this camera, but you'll notice there's a few things going on here. Number one, it's very compact. Compact, light, it's perfect for this camera. You could say they're made for each other. And you know, fitting in your backpack, going outside, you're gonna want as little weight as possible. So this really makes a difference here. Now, the range itself is in a pretty good sweet spot. 28 to 60 will offer you a decent amount at the wide end. Not so much the telephoto end, but because of the size, you do have to understand those are the trade-offs made. While this is definitely an entry-level lens, the optical quality is superb edge to edge. Bokeh is pleasing and optical distortion is very good at the wide end. I took some architectural shots yesterday and from what I could see, there was nothing really going on in terms of distortion. And the third thing is the very short minimum focusing distance on the wide end. 90s commercial cinematographers and lovers of the selfie will rejoice over how easy it is to get close and stay sharp. Now, autofocus was what I wanted to test most of all. Surely there'd be some kind of sacrifice here to fit into the body, right? I'm in full vlogger mode right now. I've got my arms stretched out. I have the camera facing me. I've got the screen turned around. I apologize if I look exhausted. That's what happens when you're inside for a few months and try climbing a mountain. Well, in any case, there is more to this than just the flip out LCD. See, to make this possible, there is also some of the best autofocusing you can get, as we all know. Now, there are, believe it or not, 693 phase detection autofocus points in here, plus 425 contrast detect autofocus points. But also making that a little easier for this tired hand of mine is 
five axis in body stabilization. It's here too. So add that to the list of things that you probably didn't expect to still be here. Look, the autofocus performance is incredible and not just for a camera like this, but for any camera. It's right up there with the rest of the A7 line, which means I almost never missed a shot. AF is snappy, precise, which is most important to me, and incredibly reliable. It's also got human and animal IAF, which helps get eyes tack sharp. Now related to that is the A7C's continuous shooting, which hits 10 FPS here, both mechanically and electronically. I say related because guess what? The AF shines here too with full tracking support. There's an ant. There's a few ants just like crawling on its leaf here. This is simply unparalleled performance for a full frame body like this. Nice hero shot you got. You making me look good? Cool. That's right. So what about video? The A7C does happen to cram a lot of the pre-existing video features inside, and obviously off the bat we have 4K video. Not really a shocker there, but what you'll be surprised to hear is that there is still S-Log2 and S-Log3 support along with HLG support. So if you do fancy yourself some color grading or high dynamic range imaging straight out of camera, you've got it here as well. Video in the A7C is pretty standard when it comes to the A7 line, but the resulting quality is fantastic. 4K video is available up to 30 FPS, and 1080p video can reach 120 FPS. Now the good news is that there is a dedicated SNQ dial, so you have slow and quick motion also going up to 120 FPS, and it looks stunning here. Video recording itself is done to the traditional 100 megabit 8-bit format we've seen on the Alpha series until just recently. As expected, Autofocus holds up perfectly in video as well. And when it comes to audio, we have the usual suspects on board, both a microphone and headphone jack, so monitoring is all taken care of, along with support for digital audio through the multi-interface shoe. As an aside, it should probably be mentioned that the A7C uses the older style of Sony's menus, so unfortunately, the new menus from the recent A7S III don't make it here. Okay, so a nice test here of both the AF and the stabilizer. In SNQ mode, we're gonna do a little cinematic reveal of the radio tower here. Let's see how steady I can hold it and how much the camera can help me. Can I do this? I'm gonna improvise a tilt here. No. Okay, so let's sit down and take a look at the A7C body itself. Now this is obviously a huge departure from the previous A7 cameras, a very different approach overall. You can see that it's mostly a black body with a silver top. Now, although it's mostly different, there are some similarities with the button layout on the back. Other than that though, you have a much smaller top, so the height is a lot lower thanks to the offsetting of the EVF. Now when it comes to controls, you have a few options here and it overall has a very physical feel. You do have the mode dial on top along with an EV dial. Now on the back you have your standard scrolling wheels for exposure control along with AF lock function, uh, playback and delete, and the usual display ISO and time-lapse modes that you would have as well. The only thing missing here is a front-facing exposure wheel around the grip. Now a lot of the space on the back is dedicated to the flip-out LCD, and I will say that it's not the brightest LCD I've seen. It has been a bit challenging today, although we have been in somewhat sunny and overcast conditions. That said, the EVF has been a lifesaver for me. Another interesting departure for the camera is in the grip. Now the grip is actually pretty nice. It doesn't feel like it's gonna slip anywhere, but you don't have any connections or card slots on the right side. Everything is only on the left side. And it's laid out pretty cleanly. You just open the latch up and you have access to your single SD slot. So as we mentioned before, there is a headphone jack and a microphone jack, but next to those, are a USB-C connection and a micro HDMI connection. And on the underside here, we have the battery, 
which you'll be happy to know is the good old NPFZ100, which is the same battery that's been in the Alpha series since the A9. Now, it's probably worth repeating that yes, this is an E-mount and it has a full frame sensor. It's real, it's hard to believe really, but uh, this does take all of the E-mount glass that's been released so far and everything that's gonna come out. So this could be a great way to finally get off that APS-C camera and upgrade to full frame. So what was I really trying to figure out today? Well, of course, I wanna see if the A7C works well in a real world situation. That situation being something where you'd want a lightweight, smaller system like this. And lightweight is something this excels at. The A7C is one of the smallest full frame mirrorless cameras you can get. And it actually is the smallest once you factor in the in-body stabilizer. Really, it's so much more feature packed than it has any right to be. And you know, you saw me before, I was carrying things up the mountain, had it on my backpack, I've been sweating all day. I want something lightweight, no question about it. And honestly, for the most part, when I do hikes, I don't really carry cameras anymore because it's a lot. While it does lack some of the physical buttons and build quality of the other A7 cameras, it offers many of the same features and level of performance we've come to expect. This is especially true for things like dynamic range and AF performance, which are both amazing. Outdoors people are gonna love this, vloggers are gonna love this, people who want to move up from the APS-C, from the camera phone, and have an actual full frame camera in their hands that doesn't slow them down. So overall, the camera is a success in everything that it's set out to do, and I wouldn't blame you if you didn't expect it to come up to these standards, but it's, it's been a blast. It's so much fun to use out in the field today, and much lighter than any other full frame camera, by far. If you've wanted to step up to full frame, this might be the best way to get into the game. That's it for the Sony a7C. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.